Nick Marshall loves women, but in his own way. In the mornings, he is awakened by a housekeeper who he simply calls Babe. She collects dirty rags, half-drunk whiskey, and snacks mixed with women's underwear and sends it to the laundry. Nick doesn't get to work before 10. He's an advertising agent, one of the best, and he's due for a promotion that day. Nick is already being congratulated by his co-worker Morgan, and the loyal secretaries are flashed to the office of the boss, whose name is Dan Wanamaker. Dan says that women rule in sales now, which means that a woman should be hired as creative director. Just recently, advertising shark Darcy Megwire quit. Nick, of course, upset, but there is nothing to do, will have to comply, although he thinks that he will easily survive Darcy and take her place. After an unpleasant conversation with his boss, Nick goes to the wedding of his ex-wife, Ginger. There he is informed that Ginji and her new husband will be going on a wedding trip, and his 16-year-old daughter, Alex, will be moving in with Nick at this time. His relationship with his daughter is not going well, so they are not thrilled about this cohabitation. When Nick returned to work, Dan Wanamaker introduced Darcy Magbire to the staff. Darcy immediately got the team up to speed by handing out boxes of items meant for women to everyone. Each employee has to figure out overnight how to sell each of the items separately or all together. At home, Nick gets drunk on wine, turns on some music, and tries to figure out all the women's stuff in the box. However, he's not very good at it at first. Then Nick takes a CD of teenage girl music from his daughter's backpack, pours more alcohol into himself, and gets down to business. He glues a poor cleansing strip on his nose, smears mousse on his hair, paints his eyelashes and nails, pulls out the vegetation on his leg with a wax strip and, as the cherry on the cake, puts on pantyhose. Just as Nick is about to try on a bra, Alex and his buddy come home. She and her dad fight. Alex accuses Nick of not caring about anyone and not even remembering her boyfriend's name. And when Nick remembers it and runs to tell his daughter, he drops a can of pellets, slips and falls into a tub of water. The hairdryer he was holding in his hand landed nearby, and Nick got a good jolt of electricity, so much so that he fell to the floor and didn't get up until morning. Nick was awakened by Babe's grumbling. When he admonished her, however, the woman said she hadn't said anything. At the hotel exit, Flo caught him a cab as usual. Nick felt like he could hear her vulgar thoughts. He decided to walk to work and then finding himself in a crowd of women. Nick realized that he hadn't imagined it. He was really starting to hear women's thoughts. At work, he was attacked by the thoughts of his co-workers, and he didn't like them. The image of the irresistible ladies' man adored by women that had formed in Nick's head was quickly crumbling. Nick even noticed Erin, the girl delivering papers around the office. She thinks no one notices her and contemplates suicide, and only his secretaries give Nick pause, there is complete silence in their heads. He shares his worries with Morgan, but he thinks Nick is joking. He drags him to a meeting organized by Darcy. At the meeting, everyone has to talk about their ideas for feminine products. Nick tries to pitch an idea for a naked girl under a waterfall in a lipstick commercial, but in his co-worker's mind, the women immediately objected and he was silenced. Then Nick overheard a co-worker's thoughts about taking headache pills even if she didn't have a headache, just to avoid having sex with her husband. He liked the idea and shared it with the others. However, Darcy took it without enthusiasm, although she praised Nick for being original. Nick realizes that he has failed. Moreover, he can't think straight because of the constant buzz of women's thoughts. So he comes home, kicks out Alex's boyfriend with whom she is going to the prom, repeats everything he did the day before, and goes out on the balcony in a thunderstorm with a hairdryer on. A lightning strike hits the hairdryer, and Nick is knocked out. But in the morning, he can't check to see if he's lost his ability because, as luck would have it, there are no women around. Nick goes to a supermarket full of women and realizes that he keeps hearing their thoughts. Then he flies to the therapist he and his ex-wife used to go to. Experientially, he proves to her that he can indeed hear women. The astonished therapist opens Nick's eyes. By knowing what women are thinking, he can control them. Nick takes the therapist's advice to heart and first goes to woo a barista named Lola. She's crazy about Nick, but has long since rejected his advances. Having overheard her thoughts, Nick easily convinces Lola to go out with him. At work, he charms almost every female co-worker one by one, and then heads to Darcy's. Nick is determined to get her out of the company. He overhears her thoughts about Nike looking for a new advertising agency. It's a very large order, and Nick wants to go for it.
However, Darcy warns him that it's important to think like a woman here because Nike wants to promote a new collection of women's clothing. Nick convinces Darcy that he can handle it by eavesdropping on her thoughts and voicing them faster than Darcy herself. At home, Alex and her high school friends are waiting for him, and the girls aren't thrilled with him. However, Nick quickly remedies the situation by promising his daughter that he will take her shopping for a dress for the prom. In the evening, he goes on a date with Lola. Afterward, she invites him to her place, but because Nick can hear all her thoughts, he can't concentrate and nothing works out. However, Nick is not one of those who are used to pass up in front of difficulties. He gathers his courage, goes to bed with Lola, and does everything as Lola wants in her thoughts. After that, the girl literally melts from pleasure. Nick wants to get a contract with Nike, because then he can get rid of Darcy. Therefore, he eavesdrops on what women are thinking wherever he finds himself. He even charms all of his female co-workers, who used to have a low opinion of him. When Nick works alongside Darcy, he begins to admire her ability to create the right slogans. He hears her thoughts and compliments them with his own. That's how they come up with the best ideas. Darcy begins to like Nick as well. They even stay together after work to just chat. Things are getting better with Alex too. They pick out her prom dress together, and in the process Nick overhears her thinking that she's going to sleep with her boyfriend after prom. Nick decides to have a pistols and stamens talk with her, but Alex is squirmy and says that her mom has already talked to her about everything and Nick doesn't need to play the caring dad. Annoyed, Nick watches TV at home. That's when he gets a call from Darcy, and he invites her to the restaurant for a cocktail. In the process, Nick learns that Darcy is divorced. This is the reason she left her last job, as she and her husband work together. After spending a pleasant evening, they kiss and then go home. Darcy wanted to invite Nick over to her place, but he wouldn't let her say so. When Nick returns home, Lola is waiting for him at the front door. All six days after they met, she has been in a state of confusion because Nick has never called her once. She thinks he's gay because he understands her so well. In her mind, she begs him to confess his orientation. Then she will leave him for someone else. So Nick says he's gay. At work, Nick overhears Aaron's thoughts again, who thinks she's invisible. He makes inquiries about her with the secretaries, and they tell him that she once wanted to write texts for commercials, but Nick rejected her candidacy. On that day, there is to be a presentation of advertising for Nike. Darcy convinces Nick that he should be the one to do the presentation, although he tries to explain to her that she came up with most of the ideas. Darcy, however, doesn't see it that way. The presentation is top-notch. In the evening, Nick writes Darcy a message in which he wants to confess that he stole almost all of her ideas. But then Darcy herself enters and invites Nick to her new apartment, where they spend a romantic evening. The next day, Nick learns from his boss that Nike has agreed to sign a contract, but he has fired Darcy. Nick says he has to get her back since she's the one who came up with almost all the moves for the Nike commercials, and he goes to see her to explain himself. On the way, Nick learns that Aaron didn't show up for work today, and he hasn't heard from her. Nick goes to visit Aaron. He is afraid that the girl has committed suicide. Aaron lives in Chinatown, and an elderly Chinese woman shows Nick the way to her house. Then lightning strikes the transformer box, the wires spark, and Nick feels that something in himself has changed. The door to Aaron's apartment turns out to be open. Inside, Nick found a vial of pills and a goodbye note, but Aaron was alive she crept up behind him and almost hit Nick with a statue. After a few words with her, Nick realized he'd stopped hearing women's thoughts. He tells Aaron that he wants to hire her to write advertising copy and the girl agrees. Nick tries to call Darcy all day, but she doesn't pick up the phone. Gingy calls him and tells him about Alex, who has called her several times in tears. Nick rushes to his daughter's graduation. Alex has locked herself in the bathroom and refuses to come out. Turns out she decided not to sleep with her boyfriend and he immediately dumped her. Nick calms his daughter down and takes her home. However, he can't sleep himself. Nick is disturbed by the situation with Darcy and goes to her house to explain himself. Nick reveals that he has been using her ideas to get her out of the company all this time, but that he has gradually fallen in love with her. He proves to Darcy that he really has changed and asks her to come back, especially since his boss agrees to it. Darcy realizes that Nick has had to get over himself, that he is the one who needs to be saved, because he has never been so frank with a woman in his life. She loves him and therefore forgives him for his sins and asks him not to leave. Darcy kisses Nick, and he returns her kiss. This is the end of the movie. Thank you for watching.
subscribe and give it a like if it was interesting.